going on and welcome back to the channel. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Let's talk some fairy tale 488. All right, man. Oh, boy. If you guys haven't read it by now, I don't even want to spoil it for you, but I got to get this shit out of me. So I just checked this out and my boy Gajel is gone, man. No! So listen. Oh, God, man. So it picks up where it left off in 487, you know. And I honestly thought Gajel was going to get saved. I honestly thought he was going to get saved, man. I figured some old school fairy tale character that we forgot about would come back and save him. But it's really looking like that's not going to happen, all right? So you got Gajel. He's being sucked in. And this looks like the end of him. And Levy's, you know, that's her boo, so she's definitely not going to let that happen. So she's charging after him, and Gajel is like, Levy, stay back. You know, I definitely don't want you to get sucked in, too. <laughs> and, you know, Levy's like, that's her god, so she's going to keep going after him. And Gajel at this point is like, listen, man, it's not even worth it. My body is already basically becoming magic barrier particles, and I'm done for. But that's not going to stop Levy, you know, so she's going to she's keep charging after him. So Gajel uses his iron powers to pin her to a piece of stone, but Levy's still not going to give up. She uses her feet to write, to write script magic so she can make a sword and cut the stone in half. After that, she still charges after him. But luckily, Panther Lily was there to stop it, you know? It might not have been so lucky for Levy's sake, but Gajel was definitely appreciative, you know? He gave a smile that basically said, you know, thank you. So it was nuts, man. Um, as he's sitting there and Lily's got... Uh, Lily's got Levy restrained. Gajil finally starts to spill his guts, man. It's like really one of the things I was waiting for, but definitely sucks that it had to be, it had something like this had to happen in order for him to get that out of him. So now you got Gajil and he's spilling his guts and he's basically like, you know, when I was younger, I was definitely a piece of shit. But then when I met you, you know, you showed me a different way. You showed me that I could be a better me and you helped me, you helped me become the best me I could be. And for that, I'm really grateful. And then he goes on to say, you know, he's, he goes on to say, you actually taught me how to love. And it's funny, because looking back at who I used to be, the yoga Jill never would have been like this. And now I'm a guy who thinks about a future, who thinks about a family, and just who thinks about what it would have been like to be happy. And I'm so grateful to you for that. And at this point, man, as he's spilling these guts, your boy is in tears, you know? Tough ass good Jill, crying, spilling those guts to levy. It's like, definitely one of the things most fairy tale most fairy tale fans have been waiting for. But damn, man, not under these circumstances. Ah, not under these circumstances. So at this point, man, the shit he's saying is so deep that you even got Lily crying, man. Lily's over there, like, <laughs> holding on to Levy and shit. And it definitely tells you that this is definitely the end of Gajel, you know? And even Lily's crying. You got Lily crying. You got Gajel crying. You got Levy crying. And it's just a really sad, sad scene, you know? But. It is what it is. Gajel was definitely one of my favorite characters, so hopefully he's coming back. And yeah, at this point, I don't know. So then, as if that's not enough, we go to another scene and we see Acnologia, who somehow, I have no fucking idea how he knows, but somehow he knows that Gajel's gone, so he says that there's only, there's only six dragons, six quote-unquote dragons left to annihilate. So this dude is walking, you know, thinking he's getting ready to go fuck shit up, but nope. You got Urza's mom, Aline, standing in his way, and he's basically like, listen, I'm not the type of dude you want to fuck with. And besides that, you know, my beef's not with you. So get the hell out of my way. But she's not having it, man, so I don't know what's going to go on between those two, but it's definitely going to be some exciting, fast-paced, hardcore shit. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. So listen, that was uh, this whole chapter was already packing up, but wait, there's more. So now we go back to Natsu and Brandish's group, and they're sitting there with August, you know, and it finally looked like August might low-key be willing to hear them out, you know? And Brandish is telling them about, she's talking about the Dragon King Festival, and she's talking about Ragnarok, and she's basically saying, listen, August, you're a very wise guy. In fact, you're probably one of the wisest guys I know. You gotta know that this is nothing more than genocide. You gotta know that, really, there's no real point to this, all right? Only thing that's going to happen is everything is going to get destroyed. No one's going to win. And we're going to end up with basically a wasteland, basically an abyss of nothingness, you know? So he, he's listening and he's like, you know what? Okay, he's like, just so I don't make you look bad, Brandish, I'm willing to hear you out. So you think, like, man, they might actually get through it without having to get fucked up or without having to try to fight. But of course, somebody's got to do some dumb shit and then steps mess. Mess, for some fucking reason, unbeknownst to me, 
He controlled Brandish's mind and forces her to stab August with a sword or knife or whatever the hell she had on it. But it runs him through. Dude. Natsu and Lucy looked at this dude like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why the hell would you do that, man? Shit was going well. And Mess was like, you know, he had to take that chance. So I'm like, man, this guy's a fucking idiot. He's kind of like the friend where you guys get pulled over by a cop or something and the cop is willing to just let you off of a warning. But your friend can't keep his damn mouth shut. He's got to do something stupid. And that was definitely mess in this situation. So to make matters worse, you know, they think they've killed this dude. No. Wrong. 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 This dude not only is still alive, he gets his ass back up. And he's some kind of transformation, man. He's transformed. And you can tell that he's definitely not fucking around. And he even says, you know, it has to be this way. So Mess definitely fucked our fairy tale crew this week. The Jill's gone. Mess is fucking up. Acnologi and Eileen are getting ready to get down. Well, dude, what is going on in the fairy tale right now? I have no idea, but I'm definitely loving it. I'm definitely loving the direction it's going. And I really can't wait for next week, you know. Dude, fairy tale hasn't drawn me in like this in quite a while. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it too. Alright guys, I don't want to make this video too long, so if you liked the review, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Also, be sure to comment because I like talking this kind of stuff, alright? If you like talking this kind of stuff, hit me up so we can discuss it. Maybe you've seen something differently from the way I've seen it, or maybe you have your own opinions on things. I love listening to that kind of stuff, so definitely make sure you hit me up. Also, if this is your first time to this channel, or if you've been here before and haven't subscribed, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm getting better and better, and I'm definitely loving the feedback, and I'm definitely loving that you guys are tuning in. As always, I appreciate everything you guys have done for me. I appreciate you listening to me, checking in, and I definitely appreciate you stopping by the channel. As always, I'm your boy, DP, a.k.a. Heroes Come Back. I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.